all these new paintings are unique in their own rights. Um, but I believe there is an architecture behind the uh, metaphors that I intend to use in my work. A lot of the concepts come from a period of time of five years ago, where I have the emphasis of recruiting to these terms that allows me to build the compositions of this new exhibition. Starting route to Harmon Meat Gallery. So I've been following Rainier's career for a very long time, from his coffee paintings to his pastels, his oils, his drawings. And I tell you, I've been most impressed by the multiple conversations that his creative work allows one to engage. Just a few examples for, for some of his work. For instance, his series on the Pataki brings in the cultural folkloric history of Cuba and also Cuba relative to the indigenous and the African heritages and the whole cultural traditions that will be forever alive as a result of his work. But one of the things I like about his work is, as I said earlier, the multiple conversations that one can have with it. Um, as an example, this piece here, where you see this meta-universalist aesthetic and where you have the ephemeral in conversation with the infinite. And then this transcendency of this piece, which is called whole. You know, I would really love to have a theoretical physicist stand before this piece and to give an interpretation as to what um, a physicist sees from his, his or her, their disciplinary um, standpoint. But as a viewer and lover of this, I mean, it makes me think about the ephemeral nature of, 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 of humans as an existence, but also it causes me to question, after the ephemeral, what? What's next for us relative to understanding the universe and understanding or trying to understand that which is actually not understandable? And that's the breadth, depth, and scope of the universe, which this piece call home um, ba basically for me articulates. So I look forward to Rainier's creations because I know that they're going to be extremely conversant. They're going to be multidisciplinarily conversant. And they're also just going to be darn beautiful pieces of art, extremely well done, masterfully created. You can do the fable of the three little pigs here, yeah. but then well, that's just a starting point <laughs> relative to how, what you see and what you get from, from this piece. Yeah, yeah, I think that's the beauty of it. Yeah, for example, like the uh, um, Venus of uh, Embracing New Year. It's, it's a great conversation with the birth of Venus. Mm -hmm. uh, when you look at the seating, you look at the back that looks as if it were, you know, half of a shell in which she's seated. But yet, you've got a bunny rabbit right there if he has her gaze. In fact, I mean, the gaze of the bunny rabbit. I mean, come on, dude. I mean, this is, this is great. We are obsessed. We are symbolisms. We are obsessed with the topics that we illustrate in our works. It doesn't matter what media you use, if it's music or it's uh, the visual arts, um, cinematography. 
which I intend to do a lot in my dreams uh, to create these unanimated uh, visions in canvas and papers. They come around very easily. I have a collection of music uh, from different artists and from different genres. So occasionally I go back to these songs and immediately I recover the idea that I had when I was listening to it. So inspiration comes easily, especially when it's a deep feeling. The body there, and then the bone there, and then end up in the goggles. Yeah, like how it. But the, um, how I started the painting, I had the, uh, the idea in mind. And so I rapidly get the uh, piece of paper and a sketch it. Uh, a sketch I have. Uh, so I say, well, I had to play it with the elements around zero and how it lights it reflects to it and that's for me what is regarding by not using uh just a specific photograph to create the whole painting just my own interpretation my own composition of of the art you know it's interesting i happen to have happened to have had a conversation with the with the owner of this piece and what i liked about what she stated was the gaiety of the piece no, really. that the piece is a it's joyful it's 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 it, you know the colors are so vibrantly um pastel which brings that soft genteel feeling uh relative to approaching this and then the face i mean when you really look at how serene and calm um the face is it puts her into this whole natural element where the rabbit is not afraid. This piece is our Robi Garisa. It is an um, Particularly, you know, I was talking earlier about how your work for me brings the ephemeral and the infinite together. And we know that as soon as we are born, we shall surely die. And that every day of life, in a very macabre way, that every day of life is a step closer to fulfilling the ephemeral nature of the physicality. And to have this child born, birth, wrapped and held by that which seems to be the essence of who we are as physical beings, a soul, <laughs> challenges the ephemeral nature. That's often. So it's not short-lived. It's something that is far beyond. And so you cannot not look at this picture to, and this painting, this creation, and not discuss who we are, what we are, and how we have come to be. So from an, um, you know, from an intellectual ontological interpretation of this piece, this is a whole state of being for me. The whole state of being, the physical state of being, and also that which gives us life beyond the physical state of being. So it's just a fantastic, fantastic piece. And I think your, your, your title? Yes. Mm -hmm. Spot of it. It's kind spot, of spot on. Yeah. Uh, last year, you just uh, painted with words. Please. But I mean, it, it, it's a rhetorical question. Yeah. The title. Yeah. Because you're here. Yeah. Meaning, you're where? You're where? Where are you? So here again, if I were to, to put two theoretical terms in conversation with each other, this would be the epistemological and the ontological having this conversation about being knowledge all of that yeah this is great so friends always ask why is it that i collect um Rainier Giannis's work and i like to tell them from uh, intellectual artistic perspective that he challenges the gautier's notion of lach pour lach 
that um, his work definitely is propaganda and it's propagandistic in nature in that he creates this multiple conversations that create uh, an artistic palimpsest, if I may, in the sense that you can have one reading on top of one reading on top of one reading on top of another. Be those readings cultural, be those readings historical, be they folkloric, or even sometimes one reads a little political that's in the nature of his work. Whether it's the beekeeper or whether it's a picture with Yolanda uh, prominently displayed. And those of you who are wondering Yolanda, Google him and find out who Yolanda and what Yolanda represents. And also, I like the fact too that he always posits something within the frame that looks like a misplaced object. And that misplaced object is what draws the attention of most of us. We wonder, why is this flying saucer-like thing here? Why is it that this coconut is here in the frame with the skin up where we think that it has uh, no meaning relative to the ways in which we have, uh, we, we have approached uh, the piece? But then when you dive deeper, then you start to understand the little cultural effigies that he places within his work. And it's just fantastic to stand there and to look at all that's there and to really create these wonderful conversations with his artistic creation. So that's why I collect uh, Rainier's work. I always ask people uh, during my exhibitions, um, that's what I have uh, the luxury to have gather more people around my art, is look at my paintings as they were your own dream. And that's how I can detect how people feel as they were the artists who created those paintings.